I think people are consumed by what's happened in the last three or four days. That anything I bring up, <laughs> even bringing up Elon Musk and and Twitter from less than a week ago just feels like old news compared to what's happening at the moment. It's just not high octane enough. You know, it was back then, but not right now. Hey, I see I see my good mate uh, Benjamin Cowan on uh, there. Do you want to come up, Benjamin? Do you want to you request or should I just bring you up? Don't be shy now, huh? Okay, I'm inviting him up to speak. Now, for those of you who don't uh, follow me too closely, I'm um, I did pass the one million mark, uh, one million follower mark. I think it was about five or six days ago now. So you know, many of you probably don't follow me that closely, but uh, Benjamin is uh, one of the guys that I started watching and following from very very early on. And if you don't follow him already, he has possibly the best YouTube channel for Bitcoin analysis. He does get into shit coins as well, so don't hold that against him. But the reason I follow him is his Bitcoin analysis. Um, I believe he has a, P a background, a PhD in mathematics or something. He'll correct me when he comes on in a second. Um, so he's got a very rigorous, methodical way of um, analyzing Bitcoin that I really respect and appreciate. As much as I like giving him shit on the timeline, it's just it's just to pass the time by, and I have an enormous amount of respect for him. So uh, he's he's on as a speaker now. So Benjamin, if you want to unmute your mic and uh, let me give you a little bit of love, bro to bro. So welcome onto my spaces for the first time, mate. Hey, how's it going? I've never used this before. Can you I can hear, me hear okay? you fine, mate. Okay, yeah. So. Uh, I, I do talk about altcoins on my channel, but I, look, this is not, this is the, this is like the altcoin reckoning time. Like this is where normally Bitcoin shines. And if you, if you think about it, not from the price perspective, but from like, like a dominance perspective, this is where Bitcoin should show its true strength. Like even if Bitcoin drops 20% or something, you know, you're, you're still likely looking at altcoins dropping more. And then if Bitcoin goes up, it'll probably outperform uh most altcoins for a while so yes forgive me for, for occasionally talking about altcoins but um this is certainly the time where, where bitcoin tends to uh, tends to show its strength and you know you, you talked a lot about the news and, and stuff and look all that stuff is great and, and and all that stuff is ultimately what will lead to us you know to another bull market eventually um but in the short term we, we always have to admit that in in a risk-off environment uh, you know, like it, it, investors just for whatever reason don't really seem to care as much about the news. And then eventually, once once we get back into risk on, all of those things that you mentioned, like, you know, you're talking about like a spot ETF in, in Australia and money going into that soon. And, um, you know, maybe a spot ETF in the United States being one day approved. We, we've been waiting for that since 2017 or 2016 at this point. Um, you know, all this stuff will eventually sort of, you know, reach a crescendo where there's so much good news and then we finally go back to risk on and then that's where the next bull market starts right and so yeah. you know you do a great job of covering the news i don't really cover it that much um but you know i mean if 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 people are if people are here i mean look you do a great job i just want i want people to know that of of covering everything going on in the space because i don't even i don't even really keep up with it that much to be completely honest i just uh i i see that the the news headlines and and I'm like, well, you know, from a fundamental perspective, it, it would make sense for the price of Bitcoin to go up. But, um, you know, it's still it's still going down right now, uh, you know, for, for other reasons. So, yeah, like like it's a, it's a tough time uh, in the cryptoverse for sure. So but, just just yeah. just to give people a little bit of a background. I mean, uh, as I said before, Ben's got a mathematical background or a science background. Can you tell us exactly what your education is? I know you got a Ph.D. or two of them, I think. Is that right? Uh, uh, so my undergrad was in mathematics, um, yeah. I minored in physics, and then I got a master's and a PhD in nuclear engineering. There you go. So he's got a big fucking brain, okay? So rest assured that he knows what he's talking about, and he's very vigorous and or rigorous and uh, scientific in his methodologies. Now, Benjamin looks at the price and the price action, and he de he's developed all sorts of metrics and models around which to analyze where we are in the market cycle at any particular point, whether the market's overheated, whether it's cooled down, are we near a bottom? He doesn't make predictions about bottoms. He says, 
look, it looks kind of bottomish, or it looks kind of heat like it's heating up. Okay, and you can make your own decisions about what you want to do from there. Is that right, Ben? Yeah, like it's like in 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 March and April of 2021, it was like it was very heated, you know, mm. and it, it was actually a very difficult time for me because um, you know, like I like I I was talking about how it was overheated but i was also wanting you know i was like I, I i sort of wanted to see it go to 100k just for like the just to see it you know uh so it it, it sort of is like a, a a tough thing to do you kind of have to balance you know being uh the person that supports it but you don't want to turn into the villain by by you know making it seem like the price could go down in the short term but yeah that's more or less what i do i, I just try to look at at, at where we are and and right now, I, I think that the the phase of the cycle we're in is where is where Bitcoin dominance is is heading much higher. Is I think we're we're at the beginning stages of that. And I mean, I know you are. You know, you love Bitcoin. You don't talk about altcoins at all. And I mean, I, I think you're rather going to enjoy the next three months um, to see the hopefully the the Bitcoin dominance ultimately takes back a lot of a lot of what it's given over the last couple of years. And and um, uh, I should say though the the cycle will go on and eventually it'll go back down and all coins will will likely surge once again. But but this is is certainly the time to sort of watch in all as Bitcoin hopefully hopefully regain some of its strength. So you you mentioned dominance a few times. Now I know a lot of people here are probably you know altcoin traders as well as Bitcoiners as well, or some of them just tuning in uh, just out of sheer interest. Can you just elaborate on? what that dominance is, what tends to happen with Bitcoin and then alts following and, and the terminology associated with that? Yeah, so the Bitcoin dominance is basically just like, you know, if you take the market cap of Bitcoin with respect to the entire asset class, it's gotten pretty low. You know, it's it, it, it went all the way down to approximately 40% or so, um, which is pretty low for the Bitcoin dominance to go from. And it, it was actually from a high of, of around 70% not even that long ago when it when it first had that rally up to like 42K or something. Uh, but you're essentially looking at the performance of altcoins against Bitcoin. So if you're investors, what this means is if you make the decision that you want to invest in crypto, you have to figure out where you're going to put it, you know, and, and obviously there's Bitcoin, which is the reason we're all here. Uh, I mean, the asset class wouldn't exist without Bitcoin, right? Like it just simply would not exist. And, um, you know, it goes to this cycle where, where the Bitcoin dominance goes up during a bear market and during Bitcoin's parabolic rally from the next bull market. And then that sort of brings in all the, all the retail investors because they see Bitcoin going up. And they put their money in Bitcoin and, and then it doesn't do anything. And the reason it doesn't do anything is because it took a parabolic rally to get them interested in the first place. And after the parabolic rally is over, then people speculate on altcoins for a while. Right. And the reason is because, you know, there's gains to be had in the altcoin market. It takes a lot less volume to move the market cap, um, move, to move the price. And then so, you know, altcoins go on for a while. People seem to become less and less interested in Bitcoin because the price isn't moving as much. And, and they see sort of like these shiny altcoin objects and they, you know, they, they chase those for a while and they do well for a long time. And, but then eventually Bitcoin recovers its dominance. Like it, it will, it will likely recover some of that dominance. And, and what the, the turning point for me in, in the dominance is the fact that Bitcoin recently put in a lower low. Okay. So like we, we went below um, the the prior uptrend that we were in. So putting in the lower low typically leads to deterioration in the confidence of the altcoin market. And when you see that, the best way to, to, to visualize that is to go look at the altcoin Bitcoin valuations. So don't look at the altcoin USD valuation, look at the altcoin Bitcoin valuation. And, and if the, the valuation of your altcoin is just going down week after week after week against Bitcoin, you're essentially taking on more risk for less reward. Like Bitcoin is a safer play. And and I'm I, I mean, again, I sit in the camp here that, you know, it doesn't even matter if Bitcoin's price goes up or down in the short term. It, you know, it, it still is likely going to be stronger than altcoins for a while. So, you know, I, I think I think people need to, to you know, to recognize that the Bitcoin is is a safe haven compared to altcoins in a bear market. The altcoins make the most sense, you know, after the bear market's over. And and after also Bitcoin has that those like parabolic rallies, and so you and I have the habit of posting or tweeting uh, very very frequently that Bitcoin is king. And so, can you explain that in the context of uh, the market cycles of Bitcoin and uh, and altcoins? 
Yeah, I mean, look, it's it, it's just the king of the asset class because without Bitcoin, nothing else would exist. You know, I mean, every we, we all sort of test out what other things can do. By the way, I I know I know uh, I really like Ethereum. I'm not going to shy away from that. I, I actually do consider Ethereum to be a blue chip, but I also think Ethereum uh, is not king. I, I think Bitcoin is king, and and the reason I say that again is because without Bitcoin, nothing else would exist. You look at the last ten years. You know, go to go to Coin Market Cap and look at the last ten or eleven years. What's number one? It's Bitcoin, right? It's been Bitcoin forever, and every other coin up there, they've all they've all sort of shifted spots. I mean, Ethereum's been number two for a while, but there was a phase just last cycle where it wasn't number two. You know, so you know the the the, the reason I say Bitcoin is king is because it controls the market. And, and this is something that, you, you know, you, you really come to grips with. I came to grips with it in 2014 when I got absolutely wrecked on altcoins. Um, and I, I sort of realized that the structure of, of Bitcoin's market cycle, whenever, whenever we put in a lower low or something, that usually is the sign that the altcoin market is, is going to be heading uh, down with respect to Bitcoin for a while. It's not, you know, it's not something I necessarily like or don't like. It's just the way it is, you know. So that's why we say Bitcoin is king, I think, is, look, without Bitcoin, this other stuff wouldn't exist. And in addition to that, you know, in addition to just being number one, one of the reasons why I think Bitcoin is king is because, you know, it, it, and Ethereum, too, it, not king, but it's a, it's a good project. They're the most massively decentralized protocols that are out there and, and nothing else comes even close. So, you know, with altcoins, you, you know, you constantly have to worry about, you know, all the VC money you have to worry about. If you're buying, if you're buying an altcoin, and and you're basically just getting dumped on by the VCs that got in during, say, like you know, like an ICO or, or something like that, you always have to wonder what is the team going to do with their tokens. You have to, you have to wonder, is, you know, is it going to melt down like like some of the altcoins we've seen recently melt down? With Bitcoin, you don't really have to worry about that same type of stuff, right? You don't have to worry about the the, the same exact things. I do think altcoins can be a good thing to, to sort of test different things out. I mean, you know, arguably we've made so many advancements in so many different areas and money is one where we're still kind of stuck in the dark ages. I think altcoins are kind of a good test bed for um, how that kind of stuff can evolve. But at the end of the day, you know, everything kind of comes back to Bitcoin. It will absorb uh, a lot of the market over the next few months and then we'll rinse and repeat the cycle and then altcoins will will have their day again in the sun and then we can <laughs> i'll speculate on altcoins again and and you'll roll my you'll, you'll roll your eyes at me no that's fine so like i guess let's just go back to november you know the market's been or well, bitcoin has been heading down since november do you and, and i know you mentioned that you don't really look at the news you're looking at it more from a you know market cycle mathematical point of view and just looking at the the charts and numbers. So do you ascribe any cause to that other than just momentum changing? Yeah, I mean, you mean, you mean why we, we've been coming down since then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, I, I think basically there's two things. So I think one of the reasons is just because we've fundamentally gone into a risk-off environment. So if you look at inflation, you know, inflation is soaring. It's, you know, eight, I think the most recent data that actually just came in today was 8.3%. Um, year over year. And the reason that's a problem is because the Fed needs to protect the value of the US dollar. Okay, you know, I mean, we, we all love crypto. And one of the reasons we're here is because we want to get out of out of fiat when we know the purchasing power is, is going to go to zero eventually. I mean, it's trending towards zero anyways, because of inflation. And, and obviously, Bitcoin, you know, there's only ever going to be 21 million Bitcoin. But the problem that we need to understand as investors is that if inflation is high and it's going higher, by the way, this most recent month, it actually came down a little from last month. But if it's going higher, the Fed has to, you know, they have to they have to combat that. And so they become hawkish. They do things like um, they raise interest rates. Right. They, they, they roll over the balance sheet. And if if the Fed becomes hawkish and they switch from QE to QT, if they if they go from you know quantitative easing to, to tightening and um, we've seen this happen before markets, broader markets, not just crypto, we switch to being risk off. Okay, so if you look at traditional markets, even the NASDAQ is down like 23% or something from the all time high. And 
when the markets go risk off, it, it does not matter what's in the news. You know, we could, you know, the, the, the spot ETF for Bitcoin could be approved tomorrow. And I don't know that it would actually make a sustained difference in the price. I mean, you might see a short term pump, but I don't know that you're going to see a rally to like 200K Bitcoin during a risk off environment. So what you're really looking for to go back to risk on is for inflation to get under control, because once inflation gets under control, the Fed, the, the Fed can sort of back off on on, you know, on on raising interest rates and whatnot. And usually once we once the Fed backs off, that's when markets can rally again. If you go back the, the two main times where we can see inflation that's similar to today uh, in the 70s and in the 40s. And if you look at, at most of those spikes in inflation, those years where it spiked, that's when we had like negative 20 percent returns in the stock market. And it wasn't oftentimes there was one case where it wasn't the case, but out of like four times it spiked like this, three of those, you know, three of those times uh, you saw you saw the stock market go down. So we're basically we're, we're basically have to just be patient and wait for, for inflation to get under control. And then once it peaked, once inflation peaked, that's usually the very that year that it peaked uh, usually led to like double digit gains in the stock market. So what you really want to look for is you want to look for inflation to sort of top out. And to start coming back down, and then the Fed can become less hawkish. They can become more dovish, and then it'll likely send us and back onto a risk-on environment with with stocks and uh, by association in cryptocurrencies. So you think it's too early for that? Then, given you know we've had two readings, one is just marginally lower than that. It's probably a bit too early to read too much into that. I think so because we also had one that was marginally lower in mid twenty twenty one. I think that we need to probably give it a few more months, kind of see what happens through the summer. I think the next two months, the Fed is going to be raising interest rates by 50 basis points. So like in, in June and July, I think they're planning on doing 50 basis point rate hikes. So I don't really see Bitcoin doing anything in, like in a, in a very sustainable manner until they get through that phase. I think after that, they're going to lower it to 25 basis points, uh, you know, for a few months. Um, so, you know, I mean, I, I think that you're right. Like it's, it, it has locally topped. But until we have, say, you know, another three or four months of data where it's not going to be as obvious because there, there was a time in 2021 where it, it sort of went down very slightly. And then the, ne- the very next month, it just started going back up again. So, do you, OK, given uh, this, you know, the strong contraction in the economy in the United States, I think it was negative 1.5 percent in the last quarter. Then uh, how do you think that plays into uh, interest rate considerations. So, with respect to inflation, and you've got two competing interests, sort of one fighting against the other. Um, do you think that they they prioritize inflation over economic growth? I think I think they have to right now. I think they have to prioritize inflation um, because you know there, there's something. Look, I mean, fiat ultimately goes to zero. We know that, but if 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 the dollar just inflates away, um, we're going to have a lot bigger, is- a, a lot a lot more larger issues that are that are going on if we if we get something, you know, hyperinflation like what we've seen in some of the other countries. So I think that, you know, it's their mandate. They, they need to get inflation under control. And they, they often talk about trying to avoid a hard landing. So there's like a, a soft landing and a hard landing. I don't think they're going to be able to accomplish very easily a, a soft landing. Um, it does seem like we are. There's a good chance that we are headed towards a recession. I know there is there is some economic data and stuff, and like jobs jobs data that that looks relatively okay. But I also have to imagine that that sort of what's going on, um, you know, in the markets right now will likely lead to to you know to layoffs and whatnot. If you look at the housing market as well, I mean, you know, prices are have soared like crazy recently, and and interest rates are are actually pricing a lot of people out. And I mean, the, the, the housing market hasn't come down, um, I think, in part because there's not a lot of supply either. But you, you can see that more and more people are sort of getting priced out. And so I do think that it's just, point- just on that, just on the housing market, isn't BlackRock uh, contributing to the tightness in the housing market, too, though? Yeah, but but, they- but if you but but but, but to like to, to just sort of finalize that answer, like I the, the if they have to prioritize inflation right now. But if, it, if inflation locally tops, which is a chance we've hit the top, I, I don't know. There's a chance we've hit the top. Um, if, it, if it tops, and let, let's just kind of fast forward in our minds, uh, six months or something, let's say closer to the midterm elections, then perhaps, perhaps by then 
um, you know, they, they, they won't be quite as quite as hawkish anymore. And and and, be, and, and one of the reasons could be if, if they see the, the economy, the U.S. economy really slowing down, they, they're going to have to try to try to protect that, too. But I think inflation comes first. They need to they need to try to get that under control. Once we see those numbers going back down, then, um, yeah, like then then they can actually pivot and, and try to try to help uh, lower interest rates potentially. And, and lead, lead us back into a, a risk on environment. But I, I still think we are a little ways off from that. Okay. Look, um, let's get back to, to Bitcoin market cycles. You're a, you're a student of Bitcoin market cycles. And you were running with I get, at least an open mind towards the possibility of an extended cycle, the longer and stronger so-called right. uh, Bitcoin cycle. Can you give us your thoughts on those and, and what you think of it at the moment? Yeah, I did a video on this um, a few days ago, and and I've talked about it some of my you know on, on Twitter as well. I, I don't think that's the case anymore. I, I think that best case scenario for Bitcoin is that we hold the summer lows, like that's like best case scenario. And and even in that situation, I, I think we'd be better off thinking about whatever comes next as a new cycle rather than rather than the same cycle. Normally, when you see this this phase of the cycle come up, where dominance starts to surge, when the price of Bitcoin goes down, um, that kind of marks a new cycle. And furthermore, a lot of the other a lot of the elements of of the cycle would be you know staying b- above some of these longer term support levels, like the fifty week, the one hundred week. We're below both of those now, and and normally normally a new cycle starts at the two hundred week moving average historically, somewhere around the two hundred week to three hundred week moving average. That's where a new cycle starts. And and for me. Uh, you know, I have to look at the market and 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 be willing to pivot. And I I think that you know you couple the the, the structural part of 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 the charts with the risk off environment that we're currently in because of what the Fed's doing. And I, I have to be I, I'm forced to consider that whatever comes after we go back to risk on will be considered a new cycle. So I I do think that um, you know I, I also I've also said many times before I don't really trade market cycle theory. Because I just, you know, I, I that was why I was I was, you know, selling a lot back in early April or early 2021. Unfortunately, unfortunately, what happened in November also was somewhat surprising to me. Like I didn't think that um, that was necessarily going to happen. Like a, a bounce back up to the prior all time high, uh, where we only go slightly above it, you know, and then and then come back down. I wasn't really expecting that, um, but I, I think it's fairly clear from the charts that whatever comes next will be a new cycle and um and we are we're in the phase right now where, where bitcoin is just slowly regaining that dominance and once that dominance gets higher closer to let's say 60 percent, i think we'll be able to support a a new bull market but not in, not until that time comes so like you know for those of us who, who look back on the bitcoin bull markets of uh prior cycles it feels like we've been cheated out of a full bull market. You know, you look at it and you go, man, that wasn't a bull market. What the hell was that? It's like, it was so muted. And I mean, I know it went from, you know, 9,000 to like 69,000, but 69 sort of, well, it was originally what, 63, 64. And then we had that let down and then we're like, all right, here we go. And it sort of just topped off at 69 and fizzled out. And it's like, oh, that is that all? It's like, so, like, <laughs> do you feel like it's, we've actually had a proper bull market? Yeah, I, I think we have. And the reason is, so we went from, like, 3,100 to 64K. I actually do think, from a technical perspective, in terms of everything but the price, everything topped out back in early 2021. Um, you know, social statistics, on-chain statistics, yeah. uh, price metric statistics, like the RSI, all of that stuff has been in a downtrend since, um, you know, since early 2021. And so you could argue that the bear market started in May of 2021. And, and we've actually, you could argue we've been in the bear market for about a year now. And the bounce to 69K just somehow got us to a new all time high. The reason I think a lot of people don't consider it a, a bull market is because a lot of times you would expect the, the returns to go higher and you would expect last a lot longer but I, I think the truth is that we have diminishing returns right this is something that I, it's just kind of like a fundamental aspect we have to acknowledge and a lot of things like actually topped out in in early 2021 and if you look at the the u.s dollar index that's where the dollar bottomed and started turning higher and 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 one of the things to note by the way i think this is actually a really important point 
if you look at the U.S. dollar currency index, every time it tops, the last two times it tops, Bitcoin topped one year later. So, you know, the dollar topped in December of 2016, and then Bitcoin topped in December of 2017. The dollar topped in March and April of 2020, and then Bitcoin hit its next top in March and April of 2021. So right now, the dollar itself is in a parabolic rally. Like, it's in a parabolic rally. It's, you know, it's, it's quickly been moving higher. And so I'm really looking to see the dollar top out. And when the dollar tops out, I think we can go into another bull market. But again, I don't think the dollar is going to officially top until the Fed pivots and the Fed won't pivot until inflation is under control. So I'm really glad you mentioned a couple of things there. Uh, first of all, that the real top was in early 2021 because I had um, TXMC on. Do you know, do you follow him on, uh, on Twitter? I know. Yeah, so I had him on and he said the same thing. He said, look, when I look at on-chain metrics... I think the top was in early 2021 and it was pretty much from there onwards, I think he, he said, uh, you know, we had the Elon Musk pump when Tesla bought Bitcoin, but that was really froth. And, you know, from a fundamental point of view and in terms of on-chain behavior, we saw the top back then. And now if I take that and then have a look, it's been just a more... Oh, yeah, just over a year since then. And I go back to all the previous market cycle tops. The capitulation point happens just around about the 12 or 13 month mark. Right. So, exactly. so that kind of coincides with the on-chain. Because if we look at the price action only, we can sort of be a little bit fooled and into thinking, well, you know, have we had the top yet? But if you sort of have a look at what the underlying behaviors were on-chain and then take that as you know, um, the determining factor of whether or not we've had a top. So it could well be that, yeah, and it's just we are just about to see our bottom now. I mean, do you have a view on whether or not timing-wise we're kind of near the bottom? So timing-wise, I, I don't – I think that if we are near the bottom, I think we have to grind here for a while because even in 2018, once we hit the bottom in December, we actually sort of stayed at the same price – uh, for the next like four months. So I think best case scenario is that if this is the pro if the bottom is this in the price area, that we probably have to spend a few more months here. I mean, we could easily bounce back to 40k and whatnot. I think that you're, you're probably going to see a bottom within the next, it, it, it's tough to say exactly, because a lot of it depends on on inflation data and, and, and the Fed's response to all that. So it's really hard to know exactly when all that stuff's going to turn. But um I think you're probably looking at a bottom within the next like three to six months, if, if I had to guess. And I, I think actually the bottom is probably closer than a lot of people think. The reason I say that is because um, the top came quicker than, than a lot of people thought, right? Like, I think a lot of people thought we were going to have the blow off rally, the blow off top rally in December. And really, the mania phase was in March and April. And so, you know, I think that the market is going to constantly keep us on our toes. And so... Yeah, it's possible that it takes us till the end of the year, but um, you know, and that's that's when it that's when the last two were. It was like December 20, 2018 and January twenty fifteen. So there is there is a possibility that that's the case. Uh, but if we also get some type of quick capitulation um, down, what I'm really looking for is a lot of volume. Every single time that that Bitcoin has bottomed in the past and we had a sustained rally to a new high, even including May of twenty twenty one. So even if you include May of twenty twenty one. Every single time we had a lot of volume on that capitulation. So you want to look for a lot of volume to come into the space. And usually it's that volume that sort of shape. It's like a, a clear indicator that the, the, the last remaining, you know, for, for lack of a better word, right? Weak hands are, are getting shaken out. You know, getting shaken the, out. And also uh, people who are watching on the sidelines are coming in to buy as well, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I, I'm actually I'm, I'm actually in that camp. So over the last like four months, I've been I've been trying to build a cash position because I, I just sort of think we're in a bear market and I've been wrecked before. Like so like in 2018, I, I had some cash uh, and I, I was deploying a lot of my cash at 6K. I left a little bit of it for 3K and, and it actually worked out, but I, I could have had more. I could have had more. So now, you know, I think 30K is the equivalent of 6K in the last cycle. Um, I'm not saying it has to break the same way, but if it does break that way, I think you're, you're probably, if, if it breaks down and we see some type of like, you know, massive capitulation down, like we saw in 2018, I think you're like at a market cycle bottom whenever that occurs.
So we, we've had a lot of uh, discussion um, on Bitcoin Twitter about, you know, the halving cycles and the typical market structures. Have you thrown all that sort of into the garbage now? Do you ascribe any value to any of that? I don't really know. I mean, like, again, we, we can look at the data and, and we can say, OK, Bitcoin's had three halving. And after each one, Bitcoin has gone parabolic. Right. So we know that the only thing that changes is how long it goes parabolic for after the halving. And again, if you if you look at you know if you just simply look at at it from a, a, a price metric standpoint or everything to say about the price, we topped out in early 2021, which was only three years really after the last. Top. I mean, the last top was December 2017. This most recent top on a on a price metric standpoint, on an on chain perspective, from a social metric perspective, it occurred just over three years later. So I, I think really the, the thing that is probably driving a lot of this, it's the having is one of the things. I don't think we can dispute the having. It does bring interest into the space. I mean, you know, I, I, I was live streaming the last having. You can feel, you can feel the excitement. I, I do think we have that to look forward to in early 2024 for sure. Um, but also don't forget that Bitcoin did also very well in the first half of 2019. You know, I mean, it went up 4x in, in, a, in a very short period of time. So there is still, you know, there still is reason to be excited about these markets uh, over the next over the next several years, even if we have to wait for, you know, a, a parabolic rally. Um, but I, I would say that, you know, from a s- the cycle standpoint, I think one of the largest driving factors besides the having is just the Fed, like the, the, the Fed pivoting. You know, I, they, they say don't fight the Fed. I, I think the the Fed is really the key to all of this. Again, if you go back and look at historical returns in the stock market, when the Fed is tightening, that's the, the biggest risk of a recession is when the Fed is tight. Like if we're going to have a recession, it's when the Fed is tightening. It's not when they are, you know, it's not when they're, we're going through a phase of, of quantitative easing generally. So they use quantitative easing to try to get us out of a recession. Um, but when, when they tighten, it, it, it can send us into a recession if we, if we, in fact, get a hard landing. So I think you're looking at, at basically, you know, there's some elements of cycle theory likely around the halving, but you also uh, need to consider that when the Fed pivots, you know, so should we. So we've dismissed uh, lengthening cycles and we're sort of uh, parking uh, the significance of the halving. We're saying that, yeah, it does bring some attention, but whether it has a direct effect on the price, who knows? Have you considered, uh, I guess, another option, uh, shortening cycles? Um, well, I mean, this most recent one would have been shorter if you, you know, if, especially if you consider the, uh, the move to, you know, to, to 64K. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think to some degree you're, you're looking at, at randomness, right? Like you, you look at 2013, it was a double peak cycle. You look at 2017, we had a, a longer cycle, but it wasn't. You know, like this cycle was just sort of straight up. Once we broke above 20K, we did, we just went straight up. We didn't really consolidate around any levels. We just kind of went straight up. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think there's a bit of randomness to it to, to some degree. I think that, you know, what we're looking for, again, is we're, we're just got to be patient. And, and when the Fed pivots, when the Fed pivots, that's probably when the, the next bull market starts. And let's hope that it coincides with, you know, with other good things. For instance, like if, if the halving happened tomorrow, I don't think it would lead to a Bitcoin parabolic rally, right? It, it's every time Bitcoin has had a parabolic rally has also been during a NASDAQ bull market. Okay, so sometimes Bitcoin peaks and the NASDAQ keeps on going. But the NASDAQ has always been going up when Bitcoin has a major peak. So if, if you know, if the halving were to happen tomorrow, then I don't really think that would have a huge effect on the price. What you really want to see is you want to see, you know, confluence between being risk on and all of these good news, you know, all of these great, great articles. I mean, like, again, you, you talk about the news a lot. Those, those news pieces, they're going to keep coming out. It's really still going to see great things, but you want to see confluence of that stuff and being in a risk on environment. And of course the having, the having certainly helps. Yeah. I'm glad uh, you mentioned um, <laughs> confluence of, um, what was it, the, the NASDAQ going up as well at the same time, because it, it's almost like Bitcoin needs that permission uh, of the broader environment being risk on before, you know, people start considering it, uh, considering allocating more funds to it. But I wonder whether or not there's a growing awakening in the investment community uh, and legitimization of Bitcoin that just the beginnings of an allocation will see a different kind of behavior 
um, whether it's a moderation of the bear market or it's um, a shortening of a cycle. I'm not really sure. So there are a lot of things that are, that are different. So I'm just considering <laughs> whether or not that has a material effect on what we've seen previously. I mean, like I mentioned before, I, I still feel like we saw a muted bull market run that we didn't see the full parabolic blow off top, etc. cetera. Um, right. But maybe, you know, maybe it's just the macro environment that we're in. And that was the reason why rather than, I don't know, I, I really can't find a reason for it. It could be anything really. Um, so when do you think, when do you think the market went into risk off? I mean, honestly, like the dollar bottomed in early 2021. I mean, around mm. when it stopped. I, I think that the hard, the really hard part about this cycle is that, like, you know, when, when we first went down to 30K back in the summer of 2021, there were, you know, there were a, certainly a mix of bears and bulls. And, and the bulls, you know, the bulls ended up being right um, in, terms of, in terms of going higher. And honestly, like, I was surprised. Like, I... Like I was kind of surprised how how quickly it moved up because I saw the dollar bottoming and that was why I didn't think, I, I mean like that was why I didn't really think a hundred k was going to happen in twenty twenty one because I was like how how is how is Bitcoin going to rally when the dollar is going parabolic? Anytime the dollar goes parabolic, Bitcoin's usually dumping. <laughs> um, so like that was actually really a really confusing thing for me to witness. Um, but now that now that we're um, in this phase now, I, I think kind of looking back on it, I think markets really started to, I think some market participants got out in, in mid 2021 and, and completely missed the, you know, the secondary rally. For instance, like in, in mid 2021, I was basically just buying Bitcoin. I wasn't even buying altcoins because I was worried about, I was worried about what you're seeing right now with altcoins. I was worried about that happening back then. Um and then, you know, then we ultimately we ultimately recovered. So I didn't really see as much gains because I didn't take on the risk of altcoins quite as much back then because I was just too busy. I was just too busy buying Bitcoin and I have more conviction in Bitcoin over the over the long haul. Um, so I do think some people started to go risk off in mid 2021. Uh, so a little bit a little bit earlier than maybe they should have. And then and then more people started to go risk off, especially as we got into the later part of the year. And I, I really started to go risk off. Um, a little later, I, I, I started in late December, early January is where I started to really go um, uh, risk off. So, so, so that um, that uh, inversion or inverted correlation to the DXY, you see that as as a cause or just a coincidence? I think it's. I, I mean, I don't necessarily know that it's cause and effect. I mean, it's sort of like if if the dollar is rallying, it means that people are seeking the relative safety of the U.S. dollar, meaning they're getting out of other assets and going into the U.S. dollar. Um, so that's that's sort of what you're seeing. Like people are just saying, you know what, I don't want to be in these risky things. I mean, like, look at what's going on with like Luna right now, you know, and, and UST. <laughs> I was like, going to ask you about that. Yeah, go on. Yeah, go on. <laughs> like these things are, are th these types of events are so um, brutal for, for market participants that they just throw in the towel and they say, you know what, I, I don't want to deal with this anymore. Um, I, I would rather just sit in, in fiat currency, even if it means I lose purchasing power, because I mean, like, you know, if, if you had an investment in, say, Luna and it's down 95 percent, like, yeah, yeah, fiat loses its value, but it doesn't lose 95 percent of its value in, in a week. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's why I think we're, we're risk off right now. And furthermore, things that are happening with Luna and stuff, I do think other altcoins will feel the effects of that for a while. Um well, I, think, I think they are already, aren't they? And someone put yeah, up a they chart. are. I, I think that's another reason why you're going to see the Bitcoin dominance go up is because people are going to be afraid to touch altcoins for a while. And, and, and if, they, if they want exposure to the asset class, I mean, I think Bitcoin and ETH, Bitcoin is, is certainly the safer play. I think that Ethereum, you know, Ethereum usually underperforms in the summer months. I, I mean, I could be proven wrong. It's, it's actually been stronger than I thought it was going to be. But I think Bitcoin is, is the safest play right now, given given the risk off environment um, and cash, of course. I mean, cash is, is certainly king in a, in a bear market. But you're still in cash, you said, right? Well, you're still uh, building a cash position or sitting on one. What are you yeah. looking for before you start deploying? Yeah, so I've been building it for a few months now. Um, I really I, I should have started sooner. I, I think I should have started uh, really in, in November. 
So, so basically my story on this is like, I, I sold out of a lot of altcoins in uh, not all of them, but a lot of them in early 2021. So I, I had some cash from then, uh, the last few months I've been building it. I'm really, what I'm really waiting for is I, I'm waiting to see a little bit more, um, you know, confidence that inflation is getting under control because I, I think my main worry right now is that looking at historical returns again in the stock market, they don't get better again until inflation starts to come back down. So I would say that's probably one of the biggest things I'm looking for is, is to see, you know, when will inflation start to come back down? And if I get the, if I, if I start to think that the Fed is going to pivot, and, and that could also come because we go into a recession, you know, if you imagine, by the way, stocks recover before the economy does. Okay, so you don't have to wait for the economy to recover to find the bottom on the stock market. Usually the, the stock market will bottom before the economy uh, turns back around. So I'm, I'm looking for inflation to top for me to think that the Fed is becoming a bit more dovish. And, and also from like a technical perspective, you know, if Bitcoin does have a capitulation with a lot of volume, I will probably start to deploy a little bit more um, than I currently than I currently am. But I, I, again, I, I don't I don't want to give the impression that I don't own any Bitcoin. I, I do own Bitcoin. I, my portfolio right now is is very heavy Bitcoin over over altcoins. So you, you mentioned stocks and you also invest in stocks. Would you be looking to deploy into stocks first, then Bitcoin or depending on what the price action is on Bitcoin? Um yeah, it would probably be both. Uh, but right now with the stock market, I'm not even like if I'm buying anything in the next like, you know, three to six months, it's all just like index funds because I don't want the idiosyncratic risk of, of like the single a single stock. I mean, like, look at what's going on with Netflix right now. You know, it's yeah. sort of like the uh, the idiosyncratic risk of, 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 of altcoins. Like, look at what's happening at Luna. You know, it, it's it's sort of better just to sort of hunker down in the blue chips for a while. And one of the ways to do that in the stock market is just to be an in index funds. It's sort of a boring thing to do, but it's also it's also a risk off time. Um, so I, I think we are we're, we're in the phase right now where wealth preservation is more important than wealth creation. And and the people that can preserve their wealth better over the next three to six months are the probably the ones that'll that'll be able to create more of it in the, in the following years. So just uh, to elaborate on that, um, you know, in a risk off environment, we're seeing asset prices fall faster than the risk of inflation. So you're saying cash will appreciate during such times and enable you to buy more of whatever you're looking for when the time is right to deploy. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, think about like where altcoins are right now. I mean, yeah. you know, the, if Bitcoin, if Bitcoin stays range bound here between 30 and 40 K for three months, uh, whether it capitulates to 20 K or not is kind of irrelevant. If, if Bitcoin, it just chops for a while, it's going to eat altcoins alive. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think that, that the idea is, yeah, inflation sucks and yeah, your purchasing power goes down. But I mean, look at what's been happening to altcoins. They've been dropping 15 percent, 20 percent a day sometimes. Um, this is this is what we've seen before. We saw it in 2018. We saw it in 2014. I saw it in you know in 2012 too. I didn't have any money in the market back then, but I saw Bitcoin. Uh, I mean, I mean, it dropped 94 percent. You know, I mean, I, mm -hmm. like, I I just I couldn't believe it. Um, and and so yeah, I, I think that we we admit that we know that inflation is 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 going to make the ultimate purchasing power uh, go down. But if if altcoins go down quicker, then, you know, having cash at, at certain stages does make a lot of sense. And it also gives you the power in a bear market to, to really come in and, and find some good deals. You know, in a bear market, do you want to be sitting on on large altcoin positions you accumulated in the bull market? That's not going to give you strength. What gives you strength is sitting on things like um, uh, like cash. And by the way, another thing that could give you strength is sitting on Bitcoin. Uh, if you if you sort of denominate your portfolio in Bitcoin, and you stop thinking about its USD valuation, like if you just don't care about its USD valuation because you assume that Bitcoin trends higher with time anyways, and that the, what happens in the short term is noise. If you if you value it in terms of your Bitcoin valuation and you just sit on majority Bitcoin, you could still come in from a position of strength in terms of if you wanted to go buy altcoins, more than likely, because a lot of the alt Bitcoin valuations are just in a bear market right now. And so like, you know, like six months from now, a lot of these alt Bitcoin valuations I don't know where their alt USD valuations are going to be, but I'm guessing their alt Bitcoin valuations are going to go down regardless of whether Bitcoin goes up or down. So I think Bitcoin and, 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 and you know, cash is, is really the, the best place to be right now um, in, terms of, in terms of managing your portfolio. And I imagine the people that are, are, 
you know, don't have any cash and if they're just fully deployed in Bitcoin, I get, you know, they probably just don't care about the, the short term, the, the short term moves. I mean, look, a lot of us have lived through these 85, 80 to 85 percent drops in Bitcoin. Uh, it always seems like it's the end of the world and then Bitcoin always tends to recover. So. Hey, there's a, um, there's a new technical analyst sort of in the community. He's been posting uh, quite a lot uh, lately. His name is uh, Aurelian Ohayon. Have you heard of him? No, I have not. I think his, his handle is T Analyst. He's been, po- I mean, he's mega, mega bullish, right? And um, he's got a similar background to you, actually. Uh, very sort of mathematical, academic, uh, and the like. And he's posted a, an indicator that I think is his own doing uh, that he calls the monthly percentage band. And uh, what that indicates is that the level at which it is right now historically has indicated potential, like a bottom to start with and multiple months of sort of sideways chop before um, the Bitcoin price takes off again. Now, previously, it has sort of stayed at this level for six, nine months. Uh, The last time, I think it was only four or five months. Um, But we have had a sort of, shorter cycle as such um, in terms of bear market. So he's calling the bear market bottom right now and sideways chop before the, you know, the next upward bull cycle starts. So I I, I just wanted to pass that by you to see if you had come across it. I'll send it to you privately. Um, I want to thank you for your time, mate. That was fantastic. Really, really appreciate it. Um, Are you up for some questions for five or 10 minutes? Sure. And, and just uh, to can I quickly comment on what you just said? Yeah, yeah, go on. Yeah, I, look, I, I think that's the best case scenario. I mean, when we were at 40K, I was like, look, best case scenario is that Bitcoin bottoms at the summer lows. But if, 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 we, if Bitcoin is destined to hold the summer lows, I would agree with the assessment that we're probably going to spend a few months at these levels between 30 and 40K is, is best case scenario. Like, I don't think we're about to shoot up. I think we probably need um, at least... Three, you know, at least three months, uh, six months before, you know, before people would actually start to have confidence again that it's actually going to hold. I mean, say if you think back to the summer of 2021, it took three months, right, before we really started yeah, to, yeah. to go back up. So um, that that that's best case scenario. I, I actually, I, I don't really mind if if we if we go down because if we go down, it it really it, it's one of those like opportunity of a lifetime phases. Like I don't, it doesn't really happen all that often for Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm in the camp that, you know, Bitcoin heavy portfolios uh, is probably is probably the best thing, because whether it goes up or down, you, you're likely going to outperform the altcoin market. Yeah, that, that probably doesn't sound uh, too good for people who are relying on uh, trading Bitcoin uh, to earn a living and pay their bills. But if, like I said, at the start of this uh, spaces session, get a job, get an income, make sure you don't have to eat into your capital and that you can have you know patient strong hands and and ride this out and hopefully you know if you get a, get a bit liquid and some money saved up on the side you're able to actually use this opportunity to accumulate so personally full disclosure like I've said to you on on the timeline I'm spending this month accumulating um, and then I'll spend a couple of months uh, building up cash again and then probably in about two or three months um, after that. Um, accumulating again. Hopefully, we're still in a pretty good range. But if we're not, I sort of roll roll my earnings into Bitcoin anyway. So um, the lower the price for me, for and the longer that goes on, um, the more bullish I get because uh, long term I'm bullish anyway. So let's right. see who we've got. Sorry, you want to add something to that? No, no, no. I was just saying that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see who we've got. So we've had <laughs> we've got a number of people on here who've had their hands up and. But I'm not sure if that's just out of habit because a lot of people press request and uh, don't really want to say anything. So let's see. Um, we run. I'm going to invite him up as speaker. We run. You're up. Just unmute your mic, and uh, we are ready for you. And I'm also going to bring up Leo. But if you just want to hold off, Leo. We run. We're ready for you. Go ahead. Hello, you there? Okay. So he's not there. Leo, unmute your mic and we are ready for you. Okay, so he's another one that's not... uh... Okay. So Chris, um, when you're ready, unmute your mic and we are ready for you. Hello. Hi, Chris, go ahead. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, so I was curious to see uh, if anybody has been doing or if you Benjamin have been doing um, 
uh, Fibonacci time horizontally? Because I know obviously like vertical Fibonacci is, you know, pretty standard, but like horizontal Fibonacci time, I hardly ever see it. No, that's not that's not something I do. I don't I don't really do that much with the Fibonacci stuff. There there are a lot of people though on I think on YouTube and Twitter that that cover that sort of stuff. But that's not really that's not really my area. Yeah. Uh, by the way, it's cool to talk to you. I'll get off because I don't want to hog this. But I will say this is uh, obviously you're not a trader, and it was funny watching you interact with Michael Saylor when you were like, "I'm not a trader," <laughs> but I will I will say there's this uh, trader Daniel from Chart Champions. Maybe you've seen people on twitter like talk about him but he's been really really good with fibonacci time i think his forecast is for i think 2024 potentially so anyways just something that i would drop off uh, is that, cheers. thank you chris cheers. uh Olua. go ahead Olua. oh uh, yeah greetings uh benjamin uh, really it's, on, it's really an honor to be in the space with you huge mathematics fan and a great um fan of your background as well uh, just a couple of uh, high-level questions. The first question is, I know you mentioned um, you're more heavily into uh, Bitcoin, but you are interested in Ethereum. Just wanted to know more, if you could elaborate more on that. And as far as uh, any mathematical models, um, I know, uh, not, not only trying to call low, but in the coin. I like it because it's it's a nice tech player. For um to a proxy that's where the the bottom of the bull market or the bottom of the bear market occurs north thousand dollars oh just want to hear more about his math models uh if, if any of his math models show projections that are contrary to what some of the noise is on on twitter space for for bitcoin or ethereum bitcoin, uh, B- bitcoin nasdaq <laughs> okay uh, i mean look i i mean for for bitcoin you know, the most optimistic scenario, I think, is is it holds the line at 30K. Um, and, and if it does, it's probably going to be a range bound between 30 and 40K for, 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 you know, 30 and 45K for probably the next three to six months, even if it's going to hold the line. I think that, you know, I, I think a more realistic expectation is to assume that Bitcoin could go to approximately $20,000 um, plus or minus a few thousand dollars in either direction. There's there's the 200 week moving average is at 22K. There's the, the fair value of Bitcoin fit to what I call non-bubble data that's also just below 22K. Um, normally, that's where the, the bottom of the bull market or the bottom of the bear market occurs. Normally, Bitcoin does not get back above its 20-week moving average in any sustainable manner until the 20-week SMA is back to the fair value fit to non-bubble data, which, again, as I said, is currently at around $22,000. That is moving up monotonically. So if Bitcoin holds the line at 30K, it'll probably take about, about eight months 10 months or something for the for the fair value fit to non-bubble data to actually reach the current like you know the, the current prices so that's why i'm saying like best case scenario is we hold the line but if we hold the line at 30k it, it's going to take it's probably going to take at least till the end of the year for you know for, for for that to hold whereas the nice thing is if if you just capitulate down you can get it over with and you can start turning higher again rather than rather than kind of getting in these sideways ranges so I would say I would say you know twenty k plus or minus a few thousand dollars in either direction is is a decent area to to really start to think the bottom could be in. Um, I, I know it sort of goes against the idea that we never go below the prior all time high. Uh, that's never happened before. Um, but if you also look at some other trends, you know from from the first cycle to the second, I think the difference between the the bottom and the prior all time high was like four hundred percent. But from the second cycle to the third, the difference was, I think, approximately 150%. So the, the, we are getting closer and closer to the prior all-time high each cycle. So I, I do think people should be somewhat open-minded and, and say that it, it could happen. But if it does happen, I imagine that a lot of people would, would use that type of, of thing to say that Bitcoin is dead because it's gone below the prior all-time high. But I would actually consider that to be um, the, the primary accumulation phase before the next bull market. Okay, thank you, Oliwa. Next speaker is Dioki. Are you ready, Dioki? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I just want to know the the coin whale holders, what are their data, and the... 
put in a lower low, its first lower low of the market cycle. That's when the dominance started to go up. That's what you're seeing right now. If we bounce off of this lower low at 29K and we repeat what 2018 did, it means going back up to the 200-day moving average by over the next six weeks, which would put us probably around forty to $42,000 in, you know, within the next one to two months. That's sort of the best case scenario. The other train of thought is that the last time we dropped below the 100-week moving average in 2018, the following week was a 29% drop that, that got us within a few percentage points of, of the 200-week moving average. If that were to repeat again, we're already down 13% this week or something the last time I checked. So if we, and we're only halfway through the week. So if, if the floor falls out and we repeat, say, the end part of 2018, then you're just simply looking at, at us bottoming sooner. So I, don't, I, I can't really say for sure. I'm, I'm keeping a close eye on on what, what tech stocks are doing right now. And if the NASDAQ can sort of bounce off the bottom part of its range, which it is sort of at the bottom part of a, of a channel right now. So it does seem it does seem at least somewhat realistic to, to think that the NASDAQ could bounce. And if the NASDAQ bounces, you'll likely see Bitcoin bounce as well. Um, I, 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 would pr- I can tell you what I would prefer. I would prefer for Bitcoin to bounce back up to 40K um, just because I, I think that if we can spend about three more months in this range, it's going to really wash altcoins out and, and make all Bitcoin valuations go down. And it'll lead to the Bitcoin dominance going higher, which will ultimately support another bull run. OK, we've got one last question. Rush out uh, when you're ready. Unmute your mic and uh, give us your question or comment, please. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, firstly, thank you for both of you for putting all the content and education out. Really appreciate it. Um, I got actually two questions, uh, one of them which was briefly uh, touched on by, by Ben. Um, when we talk about the theory that Bitcoin has never uh, touched or you know retested the previous all-time high, how do we adjust and modify this theory? Well, it's not a theory, this hypothesis, uh, based on how much money printing we have done. Because as you have shown in your videos multiple times, if we do the same thing with M2 money supply, we divide the Bitcoin value by M2 money supply, we actually get a slightly different chart, which means that 20K previous all-time high doesn't exactly align with 20K today. So how do we kind of evolve that under our understanding of that? The second question I was going to ask you uh, is we talked about the trilemma and everything. Um, Focal disclosure, I don't own any, but I believe that Radix has kind of different way of solving the same problems. I was wondering if you have any uh, opinions on that. Okay, so quickly to answer your second question, I have no idea, so I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not really qualified to answer that one. Uh, sure. the, the first question, uh, that is a good point. We, we've covered this some in the videos, as you mentioned. So I mean, it, it's not the best way necessarily to account for the money supply because it doesn't include like you know necessarily everything. But if you take the price of Bitcoin and divide it by N two, um, you, you you know you'll see that we're already testing the prior all time high right now. Actually, I believe we're below it now. Okay, so in the summer of 2021, at 29K, when accounting for M2, that was actually equivalent to the 2017 all-time high. Now, because we went back to 29K, but we also know that more money has been printed since then, we have to have gone below the prior all-time high just slightly uh, when accounting for the money supply. And that's one of the reasons why I I think that people need to be somewhat open-minded and that, you know, 30K could be the bottom, but under some type of capitulation, sustained risk off environment, we, we could certainly go below the prior all time high. I think when you account for the money supply, we already have, in fact, gone below the prior all time high. But I'll have to, maybe I'll make a video on it later. Oh, well, uh, I give you a, a, I feel uh, slightly proud that my idea is going to be a video. So thank you again. Uh, that was it for me. I appreciate it. Radix do do champion, uh, chess championships as well. If you want to look into that, that would be very interesting to have you there. Thank you again. All right, sounds good. All right. We might uh, take this opportunity to wrap this up. Uh, so, Benjamin, thank you very much. That was really a pleasure. Thank you, man. I, pre- I really do appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, things will things will start looking better here in a few months, and we can gear up for the actual move to 100k. <laughs> well, the good thing about holding Bitcoin and holding cash is, if it goes up, things are looking good, and if it goes down, things are looking good. So either way, we're all set to go, aren't we? Right. Prepare for all scenarios, and 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 you'll be set either way. Exactly. Really appreciate it, man. Thanks for coming on and uh, giving us some great explanations. All right. Thanks for having me. Thanks, guys. Cheers.